St. Martin's Mission. Welcome to Sunday Morning Mass, this second week in Advent. What a pleasure it is to be here with everybody today. Good to see you this morning, Bill. We had a wonderful Bible study today, uh, working our way through the book of Jude. Short as it is, there's so much truth there to be grasped onto if we just take our time and study through it. In fact, we only got not quite halfway through this morning, out of all 24 five or so verses of the book. But anyways, welcome to Sunday Mass. I'm glad you're here and I pray the Lord blesses you and keeps you in all things. 
Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. My brothers and sisters, we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us confess our sins to God and one another. Most merciful Father, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and by what I have failed to do. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me. And in your compassion, renew me with your Spirit so that cleansed of my sins and strengthened for your service, I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, pardon and forgive us all of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and through the Holy Spirit lead us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father Almighty. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you send your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and to prepare the way for our salvation. Give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that on the last great day we may enter joyfully into the kingdom prepared for us by your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading for this morning's Mass is from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops. Shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with their young. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is taken from Psalm 85. I listen carefully to what God the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to the faithful people, but let them not return to their foolish ways. 
Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, so our land will be filled with his glory. Unfailing love and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed, truth springs up from the earth, and righteousness smiles down from heaven. Yes, the Lord pours down his blessings, our land will yield its bountiful harvest. Righteousness goes as a herald before him, preparing the way for his steps. Our New Testament reading is from the second epistle of Peter, the third chapter. Peter writes, You must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to perish but wants everyone to repent. But of that, but the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly as a thief. Then the heavens will pass away with the terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire. The elements will melt away in the flames. But we are looking forward to new heavens and a new earth. He has promised us a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. Then all people will see the salvation sent from God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark writes, This is the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. It began just as the prophet Isaiah had written. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare your way. He is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. The messenger was John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness and preached that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. All of Judea, including all the people of Jerusalem, went out to see and hear him. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. His clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a feather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. John announced, Someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I am not even worthy to stoop down like a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God is good, amen? All the time. I'd like today, on this second Sunday of Advent, to read one verse from our Old Testament reading as the basis for today's message, from the prophet Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 5. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father, we thank you. 
We thank you from the bottom of our heart for another gift of today. Thank you, Lord, that we can be here in this chapel of St. Martin to worship, to pray, to hear your word, to receive the Holy Sacrament of the Eucharist. And Lord, change our lives. Help us be willing to let you change our lives. If we're not willing, it's not going to happen. May we change our mind, our ways, and our hearts to follow you the best we can with all the things that you've given us and surrender our very lives to you. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord is spoken. The title for today's sermon is, The Glory All People Will See. The Glory All People Will See. Keep in mind that this season of Advent, as we said last week, is a time to look ahead, a time of looking forward, a time of expectation, a time for something yet to be revealed to us, for the salvation of God's people to live in eternity is soon to be completed. Well, wait a minute. Wasn't it completed at the cross, Father? Yes, it was, I will say. At the cross, Jesus died to wash away our sins. But yet there's something yet to look forward to that's going to happen. And Isaiah the prophet is writing about what is yet to come. He tells the people, live in expectation. Live in expectation. He says, there's a day coming when all people throughout the entire world, everybody, will see the glory of the Lord. Not just some, not just some in one part of the world, but yet people throughout the entire world will see the glory of the Lord. Listen carefully, Isaiah 40, verse 5. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind will see it together. We're all going to see it at the same time. We're all going to see God's glory together. So the question is, should we take this message lightly? The answer is no. Or do we accept it and believe it with enthusiasm in our heart? The answer to that should be yes. Notice he says, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We're not making this stuff up. We're not talking about thoughts from our own idea. Isaiah isn't speaking about his own opinions and his own ideas of what's going to happen. He says, rather, God has given him what to say. God told me what to write. You know, many in our society, they live their lives as if the Lord's never going to come again. Because we keep preaching, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. But keep in mind, in God's time, it's different. Peter says a day with the Lord is like a thousand years to us. And a thousand years is a day. Many in society live as if Jesus is never coming again. Many churches never even talk about it either. Or when they do talk about it, they add so many details and things they'd like to hear about. People walk away confused, wondering what did that preacher just have to say. That they live indifferently to what the Bible teaches. They don't worry about it. Ah, when he comes, he comes. It's all going to be good. They don't live to what the Bible teaches about some simple facts. The birth of Christ, which we celebrate this month, right? We celebrate on December 25th, the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Or they don't talk about so much his life and his ministry. Yes, Jesus lived and he walked this earth and he had a ministry to reach out to people, to heal the sick, raise the dead, preach the gospel, and ultimately die on the cross. They don't talk about his resurrection very often, except once a year on Easter. Yeah, Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. It truly happened. He ascended into heaven, the scriptures teach us. And because he ascended into heaven, he promised that one day he will come again. You know, it's interesting, when Jesus talked about his life, while he was alive with his disciples, he said, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to kill me. Here's his death on the cross. 
They're going to bury me, but I will rise again. There's his ascension. And then he said, I will ascend to my Father, to my God and your God. And then he also said, I will come again in the clouds with great glory. You know, we have these weeks of Advent, folks, to search our hearts. To search our hearts. Most of our time is spent searching in stores right now. We need to be searching our hearts of what? Of our sins. Turn to God. Repent. Let God cleanse us of our sins. The goal of these weeks is for us to draw closer to Jesus. That's the goal of Advent. To draw closer to Christ. So when we celebrate the birth of this baby Jesus who came to be the Redeemer of the world, we can come to Mass on Christmas on our knees begging forgiveness, thanking God for his glory, thanking God for the Savior. But we spend so much time, effort, and money during this time of year to get just the right gift for some family member or, or friend we see once in a blue moon. The question I have is, do we spend that same amount of time searching the scriptures, meditating on God's word, contemplating on the thoughts of God as he gives them to us in the scriptures and prepare our hearts to meet Christ. Paul says, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Isn't that amazing? Paul says, the gift of Christ is so great, he can't even find the words to describe it. That's how great the gift of God is. You know, if we want to give somebody a great gift, Tell them about Christ, huh? Tell them about Jesus. Invite them to church. Pray with them. Let them know you love them and you care for them. I was talking to somebody, I don't know, we might have been talking this morning, Bill, about that. You know, sometimes we get a gift as if that's supposed to make up for the rest of the year somebody wasn't very nice to us. <laughs> or we give gifts to someone else, not for them, to bless them, but to make us feel better for not treating them properly the, the rest of the year. Paul says the gift of the Lord Jesus is so wonderful, you can't even find a word to describe it. You know, folks, this season, the Advent season, is really about Jesus. Let me say that again. This Advent season is really about Jesus. Because in Advent, we step into the church's cycle of the life of Christ. And we relive all the things of Advent leading up unto the birth of Christ. Where he came into this world to give of himself. You know, maybe when we give out gifts to others, we could think of it as a way to give ourselves for the good of the other person. In the name of the Lord. You know, in this way, the love of God could be passed on to someone else, even in the gift that we give them. But God has given us the greatest gift of all. This text for today that I read from Isaiah is really about the love that God has for us. Uh -huh, so you might ask. Well, here's the answer. Because it's by the love of God the Father for us that his son Jesus was born and is going to come again. The greatest verse of the Bible, everybody knows it. We see it posted at football games even. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. You see, Jesus came to this earth once for a very specific purpose. He didn't come to make us wealthy. He didn't come to make us healthy. He didn't come to make us rich. He didn't come to make sure all this stuff would be given to us somehow. No, he came for a very specific purpose, to offer himself for the sin of all mankind. That's why God had to be born in the flesh. And yes, Jesus is God. In the beginning was the word the Word was with God, and the Word is God. That's Jesus the Christ. He's God, and He's come in the flesh to offer Himself 
for the sin of all mankind. Paul writes in Romans 5.8 that God proved his love for us and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's how God proves his love for us. And that while we are yet sinners, Christ, his son, died, who took earthly flesh, born of a human mother, as a heavenly father through the Holy Spirit. But yet in the flesh, God could die on the cross so that we might be saved. The Son gave up his life for me and for you so our sin could be washed away if we simply, truly believe in him. And through that faith in him and Christ's death on the cross, we are now brought into fellowship, brought into fellowship with God, even though broken by sin, Christ has redeemed us and made us whole. Amen. So do we need Jesus? <laughs> yeah, we do. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. My brothers, my sisters, this is the reality of our sin. As much as we try to rename it, we try to bury it, we try to pretend I'm okay, we try to pretend I'm not doing it, the truth of the matter is we have sin in our nature and Christ came to renew our natures, to be like his. We were born with sin once, but we're born again in Christ. So the sin is taken away that we might be new creatures in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. And because we are new creatures in Christ, now we look forward, now we look forward to that return of Jesus. God in his word promises through Christ that we can have the divine nature within us. Peter writes he's given us these precious promises so that through them you might escape from the corruption that has infected the world and thereby may come to share in his divine nature. The sinner can share the divine nature of Christ and nothing can separate us from that divine love of God. And so, my friends, that's why we look forward to the return of Christ. Because when Christ comes, our salvation is made complete. It's made total. No longer do we live in these temporary, broken-down bodies that change with age and break down over time. Because our salvation is complete. Everything is fulfilled. And we will see Jesus face to face. Because we're going to be just like him. So what do we do in the meantime? Sit around? <laughs> Wait for him to come back? No. Listen to what the Bible says. Paul writes to the Philippian church, forget what lies behind. Forget about it. Don't let it hinder you. Don't let it hold you down. Don't let it pull you back in. He says, you forget about what lies behind. Then, Strain forward to what lies ahead. Some translations say reaching forward, but straining forward to what lies ahead. Christ is coming and he wants us to strain forward to meet him by shedding our old past and putting on the new man in Christ. And then he says, and then press on toward the finishing line. Isn't that great? Press on toward the finishing line. You know, there's an end to the, to the strains and struggles of this life. There's an end. They don't go on forever. Now is the time to not give up. Now is the time to press on, to fight, as Paul says, the good fight of faith. See, we don't know how much longer we have to wait until Jesus comes to it. He always said, I'm going to come. The Father will send me, but Jesus also said, I will come like a thief in the night. I don't know the day, I don't know the time, only the Father knows that. But he said, I will be coming again. So in the meantime, don't be lethargic in your faith. Don't be duped into thinking all I have to do is sit around and all is well. Don't be duped into thinking, now that I'm saved in Christ, I can do what I want, and he's going to save me anyways. No. 
Rather, in your faith, stand firm each day. Each day, stand firm, making no compromises in, in your faith and your holy conduct. Don't compromise with the ways of the world. Don't say it's okay because the world goes this way. No. Turn your back on the world. Forget what lies behind. Reach forward to what lies ahead. And rather live each day as if you're serving the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And look forward to his glorious return. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We thank you, gracious God, for this gift of your message. We thank you, Lord, that we can look forward to your coming, your imminent return, and we pray, come, Lord Jesus, as we look forward to going home with you eternally. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this time. and Continue to bless us, Lord, I pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let's join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, and of all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all the ages, God of God, light of light, true God of true God. Begotten, not created, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today for our prayers will be the great litany. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Spirit, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, neither reward us according to our sins. But spare us, good Lord, spare your people, whom you have redeemed with your most precious blood, and by the mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord. And now, Bill, your response will be, good Lord, deliver us. From all evil and wickedness, good from Lord. sin and the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation, good Lord, good. deliver us. From all blindness, blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from every hatred and malice, from all want of charity, good Lord, deliver us. From all inordinate and sinful affections, and from all the deceits of the world, the flesh, and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. From all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment, good Lord, deliver us. From lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire and flood, from plague, pestilence and famine. Good Lord, deliver us. From all oppression, conspiracy and rebellion, from violence, battle and murder. 
and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by the holy nativity and submission to your law, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and bloody sweat, by the cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, and your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of your Holy Ghost. Good Lord, Lord. deliver us. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, at the hour of death and in the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. We sinners beseech you to hear us, O Lord God, that it may please you to rule and govern your holy universal church in the right way. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to bless and keep all your people. Good, Good Lord, Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to send forth laborers into the vineyard and draw all mankind into your kingdom. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to give to all people increase of grace to hear and receive your word, and bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and have deceived. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to give us the heart to love and fear you, and diligently to live after your commandments. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to so rule the hearts of your servants, the President of these United States, of all leaders, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. Good Lord, Lord deliver us. us. That it may please you to make wars to cease in all the world, to give all nations unity, peace, and conquer, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to show your pity upon all prisoners and captives, the homeless and the hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to give and preserve to use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time we may enjoy them. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to inspire us in our several callings, and to do the work which you have given us to do with singleness of heart as your servants, and for the common good. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to preserve all who are in danger by reason of their labor or their travel. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphans, the widows and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. Good Lord, deliver us. That it may please you to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with your presence those who are fallen and infirm. Good Lord, deliver us. Son of God, we beseech you to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Also. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Let us give thanks to the name of the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Yes, Lord. Father, all powerful and ever living God, at all times and in all places, it is right to give you thanks and praise. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, your beloved Son, to redeem us from our sin and death and to make us heirs with him of everlasting life. And when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice and behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all your saints of every time and place, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your holy name. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father most holy, you are worthy of praise, for in Jesus your Son you reveal the depth of your love. Through him you have liberated us from our slavery to sin and death, and made us a family where your boundless gifts are revealed. Invited by his love, we are gathered at this altar, and we give you thanks for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. Sanctify them now by the power of your Holy Spirit, that they may become for us the body, and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. On the night when he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. After giving thanks, he blessed it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this, all of you, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give this in our holy name.
When supper had ended, he took a cup filled with wine, gave thanks, and blessed it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Father, as we celebrate this Eucharist, we enter more deeply into the saving work of your Son, the Good Shepherd who leads us along life-giving ways, the Lamb who takes away our sins, the Victor who lives and reigns forever at your table. At his intercession, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we might become a living sacrifice, wholly dedicated to your service. May the same Holy Spirit make us one, one in faith we profess, one with those who minister to your church, especially Todd our Archbishop and Bernard our Abbot General, and one with those who sorrow, one with those who rejoice, one with the sick, the suffering, and the dying, and one with our departed brothers and sisters, whom we commend to you, your perfect love. When we falter, Father, and our steps leave your path. Bring us back to your ways with gentle compassion, so that at the last day, together with Mary, the mother of God, Joseph, her husband, and all the saints, may take our place among your great cloud of witnesses, united with you for all eternity, through the merits and mercy of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, our living Lord. Through him, with him, in him, to you, God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And now at our Savior's command, informed by the word of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from all that is evil. And grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and through the Eucharist, grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all who with faith receive. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world with mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world with mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. By the will of the Father, and through the working of the Spirit, your death, O Lord, has brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me, O Lord, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your commands. Never let me be parted from you.
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Today, as we receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, physically and spiritually here in the chapel, my prayer is for those watching that aren't with us today, that you receive Christ into your heart, wherever you are, whatever you may be doing. We receive now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Lord, may your body and blood touch my soul. In your mercy grant that no stain of sin may remain in me, or in the souls of those whom you have refreshed with these sacred gifts. Let us pray. Father, you have nourished us with your word and with your food and drink of new and unending life. Through them, teach us to see as you see. Wisely judging the things of this earth and firmly embracing the things of heaven. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Absolutely. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Receive the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and always. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is dry, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so tender. Shed 
today and being part of this holy mass here in St. Martin's Chapel. May the Lord bless you and keep you in everything that you do. You know, we're nothing fancy here, but we want to present Jesus to you in a way that touches your heart. With that being said, may God bless you truly in all that you do. This mass is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.